welcome to Convo Fango. Today we are joined by writer, director, Michel Blanchard. <laughs> Uh, for your dead Helen. <laughs> I had to really think about that though. I was like, don't overthink it. You got it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, cheers. Okay. Thank good. you for coming. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. Thanks so, for having me. Absolutely. I absolutely fell in love with this movie. I have to say, I'll just get that out there right off the bat. This is amazing. Um, so I'm really Thanks. excited to chat cool. with you today. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thanks. <laughs> Um, so I have to ask you, word on the streets is that you made this short kind of with like Sam Raimi in mind. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, I, there were different uh, influences uh, in this movie because it's, it's, a, it's a love story, but it's also a love letter to cinema in its own way. And so it's kind of a journey through uh, movie genre. So there are a lot of different influences, but definitely the most... The biggest influence was Sam Raimi from the get-go. I mean, the already the mix of genre horror and and this rom-com has kind of a Sam Raimi feel to it. Uh, and um, and yeah, he's always been a big influence, and I like the way he is always. I have to say, because in in my work, I there are two things I try to keep in mind always, and it's be generous and be sincere, mm -hmm. and because I'm kind of interested in, in, in a cinema that is uh, um, really out there and entertaining and fun and a bit over the top. Mm -hmm. I like having fun with that, but it has to be sincere. Otherwise, it, it, it takes you out of the story. It, it collapses. And, and I think Sam is, is great at that because he is so over the top in so many ways and it's so extreme in in the Spider-Man trilogy or in his horror work, it's always mm -hmm. far so bold and, and colored, full of colors, but it's always sincere and there is no cynicism in what he does. Even if right. it's really campy, it's all, it comes from the heart. And I think that's why it never breaks. And so, so yeah. And this is, I agree with everything that you said, big Sam Raimi fan, um, but this is kind of a fairy tale story because you made this short kind of with Sam Raimi in mind as an inspiration. And now Sam Raimi is producing the feature adaptation of this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. It's, it's, <laughs> it's even weirder for me, I can right. assure you. Um, yeah, no, it was a, it's so funny though, because um, when I finished the short, uh, I was kind of in a bad place in my life uh, for multiple reasons and COVID and I had to, move out of my apartment. Uh, and, and so I, I, I found this new place here. I knew nobody here. I'm living in a shared house. And I was really kind of depressed at that moment. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit into it. I know. Yeah, you're... <laughs> um, and, um, and so the movie wasn't, was just finished, but nobody saw it. There was nothing happening in particular. And I felt like, oh, I don't feel at home here. What's should I do to feel a little bit more at home? And the first thing I did literally to put something here to make me feel better was I went online and I ordered this poster that I tried to show you. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, like two months after that, I had my first Zoom with Sam and it it's, it was uh, sorry I'm saying Sam not Sam Ray. <laughs> you guys are buddies you guys are gonna be working yeah. together yeah Sam you know <laughs> yeah and he's the sweetest he's so nice and he keeps calling me pal and saying great <laughs> things about the movie and it's so surreal because everything's taking place from uh, is happening from my computer mm -hmm. still from this little room in this new new house that I so yeah this is like the wildest story. Like, I, I love this so much just because it's, I mean, this is every filmmaker's dream, right? Like yeah. you make a, a short because it's very hard to get the money to make a feature. So you make a short as a proof of concept with maybe like a certain producer or director as like, like a best possible case dream fantasy scenario in mind. And then yeah. you end up getting to work with this person on like the feature yeah. version of this. That's so insane. And I'm so excited for you. <laughs> Thank you. I wasn't even dreaming of that, actually. It's, I mean, we talked about making it into a feature with my Belgian producer, Michael Goldberg. 
but uh, we and and we knew we wanted to shoot it in in New York if possible in English the, the feature mm -hmm. version but we were thinking like this will take years and it's gonna it's kind of our side project and we we're excited by that and we're gonna see how we make it happen but uh, I mean I got the chance to, so the short did well and we won a prize uh, several prizes that got us some attention and there is this um, mm -hmm. manager Jerome Dubose who contacted me and he started all and we told him about this feature adaptation project but I wasn't in a million years thinking that I would meet those people and 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 yeah the project is moving really faster than anticipated yeah that makes it even better because I feel like it's like so big that it wasn't even in like your orb of like realm of possibility you know what I mean it's just so like out there and then now this is all happening and it's just really really just a cool story <laughs> <laughs> also this is like one of the most expensive looking short films I've ever seen in my life I have to say it's so polished Thank you. It wasn't that expensive. I mean, we had we, for a short film here in Belgium, we had a nice budget, but a normal budget, nothing extraordinary, like well produced short. But it's the, the movie is kind of ambitious and and in many different ways. We have a lot of sets, mm -hmm. so we shot it in eight days, but we have much more sets than eight. So we had to move all the time and. There's a lot of visual effects and and practical effects and a lot of stuff happening. So so yeah, but the secret is to be as prepared as possible. And I love to prep. I love to previs to to um, to shot list everything and to test every FX. And I I do a little bit of VFX myself, so everything mm -hmm. is really planned out, and so we don't waste time and money. Right. Smart. That's the key. All right. Okay. <laughs> Listen up, guys. Keep that in mind. <laughs> Do you want to tell us, I realized we didn't talk about like what this is about. Do you want to give kind of like a little elevator pitch of what this movie is story-wise? Yeah, sure. Um, so Your Dead, Ellen, is the story of Max, a young guy living in Brussels. And he has a problem because he is in a complex relationship with the ghost of his dead girlfriend, Ellen. And so naturally, it's not an ideal situation. So one day he's going to try to break up with her. And she's just not gonna let it happen. So, so he's gonna go through hell. And the idea behind this movie was, um, there are two things I wanted to talk about how difficult and terrifying it is to say goodbye to the people mm -hmm. you love. Um, uh, not particularly about death itself, but about separation in general. And the other thing was I wanted to experiment with genre blending, because I think that's kind of one way to, to, to reinvent cinema. And I think that might be the future of cinema, because sometimes we feel everybody, everything exists already. So I feel like mixing, um, using the same old ingredient, but mixing them in a new way and make it exciting is, is, is one way to, to, to approach the, the future of cinema, maybe. I don't know. I love that. And so yeah. those two, yeah, those two ideas came together very well. Um, Cause uh, like I said earlier, uh, it's, uh, I think I said it earlier, I don't know. Uh, the, this movie is kind of a, um, it's a love story, but also a love letter to cinema. And we kind of go through through those different genres but it has to again be sincere and feel earned so those two ideas came together perfectly because with the structure of this supernatural love story we have kind of the main stages of grief so the movie begins with the denial that brings a lot of absurdity and comedy so we have the rom-com aspect and then we go to anger that brings us to the horror and then the acceptance, which uh, gives the more um, intimate uh, emotional beat of the story. I have to say you kind of blindsided me with like the amount of tenderness here. I love horror comedy. It's like one of my favorite kind of like subgenres, but it's really, really, really difficult to do it well. <laughs> like it's a really hard thing to pull off. And this is genuinely funny. And then it gets genuinely scary and has really cool effects. 
great. But then I wasn't expecting to like cry by the end, you know, like I was very, very touched. And I think I fell in love with the actors very quickly as well. Like they just had such a, it, it's like what you were saying, the sincerity behind it. Like at the core, you could tell that the story and everyone on board with this was, it's just a sincere project. And that just bleeds through everything. And by the end, I was like, oh shit. Like I was not expecting to feel like all of these feels that I'm having right now. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I feel that it's it's also what's exists what is exciting, sorry, but is that um I feel like when you blend genre and tones, um it not only uh, it's a fun ride because you're surprised, but it's it it's it's uh, giving to each emotion is giving to each other. It's not mm -hmm. like it's not just the sum of its its parts. It's it creates something new and and yeah, and I, that was very deliberate at the end. Like you're so distracted by the um, the roller coaster of the of the story and the horror and the fantasy elements that when the emotion hits you, you're really not expecting it. And I feel that in a weird way, the emotion feels uh, more genuine and more um, earned. I think because um, it's not like this slow build where you're like, okay, I know where you're going. Okay, I know, okay, now it's gonna be sad. It's like, you're not expecting it. And then it slaps you in the face like it does in life. Cause I mean, I, I feel like it's happening all the time. I feel in my life, all the best moments of my life, the best things that happened to me were kind of always in the same period that the worst things are happening. Mm -hmm. And you can be laughing out loud or at one second and the next you're, learning about the, the worst news ever. And, and the contrast is so powerful, but it's so real to life. I think. Yeah, it's funny that you said that because as you were talking about the roller coaster and being distracted by the roller coaster, so you're blindsided, I was thinking, yeah, that's kind of like life. Like you're distracted by these day-to-day -day things that are happening and then you're just blindsided and you keep blindsided by joy or by grief. And, but it's like that dichotomy of like, the most wonderful thing just happened. And then the most horrific news I just got, but then also this other wonderful thing. So it's like this weird balance that's always happening, but I feel like the movie weirdly captures that. Like, absolutely. Cool. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, and I think contrast is, you, it's always interesting, so. Yeah, in the span of 24 minutes, I, I was very shocked at how much you made me feel and all these, I was just kind of all over the place. And I was like, what is, what is happening right now? Cool. Yeah, I was afraid to be a little bit, to go a little bit too too far with that because, I, I mean, at some points of the movie, it's a bit, <coughs> sorry, it's a bit jarring to go to change to switch gear in such a um, strong way. But yeah, I'm glad if it worked. <laughs> it's in a refreshing way. It's not a way that feels like it like rips your head off of your neck and you're like, where am I now? It just kind of like smacks you and you're like, oh, this is a weird refreshing way because I wasn't expecting to feel this way or expecting it to take me there. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so this, the short is going, is now on like the short list for Oscars, right? Which yes. is wild as well. Congratulations. Hey, thank, thank you. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, I'm so glad we, we've gone that far. So yeah, finger crossed. I, I would love to to come over to because I've never been to America yet in my life so that would be a great oh. way to come if, it, if I'm invited by the <laughs> academy that, that that's yeah that's great but I'm just so thankful to to have been that far and I feel so lucky already and if it stops here for the career of the short film it, it's okay I have I have uh, a lot of things to look forward to so I'm crossing my fingers for that Oscars nom though. And I just love the vision of you landing at like LAX and then showing your passport. And they're like, what brings you here? And you're like, I'm nominated for an Oscar. <laughs> wow. I hope that speed will happen. I, I'm, I'm putting it out there. We're all going to like collectively put that out there. <laughs> thank you. And but if I that will happens, think of you at that moment. Yeah, yes, thank you. If that happens, <laughs> that has to be your answer. You can't say, oh, I'm on vacation or I'm just visiting no. for whatever. You're like, no, no, I'm here for the Oscars. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we go? I don't imagine you can say much about the feature yet, but if you can, feel free. <laughs> Um, I, I have nothing much to say. Um, for now, we don't have a script yet. I've, I worked on a treatment we are mm -hmm. quite happy with, but that being said, we could totally 
change direction. We are kind of uh, working it out and finding the, the, the story. And I'm meeting with writers at the moment. So, um, because I feel, um, yeah, I would like to get some help to to mm -hmm. uh, flesh out the story and write it. Because um, first of all, like I said, I, I've never been to America. So if it's going to take place in New York and feel uh, authentic, I, I, I would love to write it with someone who knows what he's talking about. And, uh, and I'm just excited to collaborate with great American writers. So that's where we're at, but it's looking good. And Nice. Also, I guess you're going to have to go hang out in New York to do research, right? It's work. Probably. <laughs> Where are you, actually? I'm in Los Angeles. All right. Everybody. If you want to set it in L.A., come hang out in L.A. and I'll show you around, <laughs> give you the real authentic experience for your writing. <laughs> All right. Cool. I'll be your I tour guide. Be. I'm like, welcome. This is California. Absorb it. <laughs> Put it into your script. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, I know that's all on the horizon and stuff, but I hope you're also just kind of like enjoying this present moment and like all of yeah. this well-deserved love for the short film, because I think that needs to be celebrated as well. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. I'm going to put a link to make sure that everyone has their eyeballs on this. Um, I've heard wonderful things about it. And then I watched it and now I'm going to go out and be like, a champion of this film and be like everyone needs to watch this so <laughs> <laughs> great thank you for All the right. support yes you're wonderful and thank you so much and congratulations <laughs> on everything <laughs>